Hello, friends. Our entire life, whether we want it or not, revolves around brands of clothing, food, and cosmetics. A significant portion of sociologists even considers brands to be the subject of a cult today, the value of which is derived from the feelings they evoke in us. That's why a certain hierarchy has formed, consisting of loud and well-known names. And, as you may have already guessed from the intro of this video, among them is the globally renowned automotive brand Bugatti, whose masterpieces have been making car enthusiasts drool for many years. The well-known French corporation specializes in producing sports supercars, and all models of this brand are exclusive and created only for the chosen and wealthiest individuals in our world. Hypercars from the company always occupy a special place at auto shows and exhibitions, and the novelties are sold long before their official presentation. Interestingly, to this day, no other company in the world has been able to replicate Bugatti's success. And I think you would also be interested to know, as I am, how it all began. In short, get comfortable because that's what I'm going to tell you today. It all started almost a hundred years ago, in the distant year 1909. It was at this time that the talented Italian engineer Ettore Bugatti founded his company with the same name. This event was preceded by the assembly of the first Bugatti Type 10 car, on which the creator participated in a race and even won. But more on that later. Ettore Arco Isidoro Bugatti, that's the full name of the sports car creator, was born in Milan in 1881 into the family of Italian jewelry designer in the Art Nouveau style, Carlo Bugatti and Teresa Lorioli. The future designer spent his entire childhood in Milan with his older brother Rembrandt. There, he completed school and entered the Academy of Fine Arts, where he and his brother studied sculpture. By the way, after completing his education, Rembrandt immersed himself in art and became a well-known sculptor in Italy by the age of 20. Ettore, on the other hand, pondered his vocation for a long time. But that all changed nearly a hundred years ago, in 1900, when unexpectedly, even for his family, the young man presented a car he had constructed himself at one of the Milan exhibitions. Yes, of course, you might ask, how? And you might say it's impossible. But, honestly, few could give a clear answer to that question. The fact remains, the 19-year-old had the resources and the desire to build his first car. Rumors have it that Ettore was influenced by the first developments of automobiles, or, as they called them then, self-propelled carriages. He saw something similar on the streets of Milan and couldn't get it out of his head. He was inspired by the works of renowned engineers of that time, and secretly from his wealthy parents, the young man constructed a car in one of the family garages. Biographers say that the secrecy was due to the fact that his father and mother did not want such a future for their younger son. The father was a renowned master of jewelry, the older brother also became a sculptor, and the younger one leaned towards rough and formless mechanisms. At that time, no one understood that the future belonged to automobiles, and many self-taught citizens who later became famous engineers were even ridiculed. Our hero experienced something similar. Of course, his first car could hardly be called perfection. But even with its flaws, Ettore managed to interest many investors with his ideas, which the very young man eagerly wanted to bring to life as soon as possible. Among them was Count Ganelli, with whose financial support the young designer began working on a new achievement. By the way, his first car, despite all its shortcomings, received a gold medal. Under the careful financing of the Count, another car was created in just two years, also receiving a medal at the exhibition in Milan. This model earned him the reputation of a very promising young designer, after which various companies began to collaborate with him, including the company de Dietrich. So, at the age of 23, in 1904, Ettore took the position of technical director in this company. However, the project opened new horizons for the designer. He not only engaged in creating new cars, but also participated in real races. 
It is worth noting that at the beginning of the 20th century, the automotive industry was just gaining momentum and practically every master could build a car in their garage. Often, this did not require great talent, one just had to understand the basic elements and know how things worked. As for the technical part of the car, Ettery thoroughly studied competitors, learned from their positive experiences, while always leaving room for creativity and imagination. Perhaps that's why his cars were very popular among the wealthy of that time. Until 1907, Ettery Bugatti changed several jobs in the automotive manufacturing sector and eventually joined the Gasmotor and Fabric Deutz, where internal combustion engines, IC engines, were produced. However, absolutely no one suspected that, alongside his main job, he was creating history in his own garage, night after night, bolt by bolt. For an entire year, he worked on his own masterpiece, much like his older brother worked on sculpture. And that's how the very first Bugatti car, named after its creator, the Type 10 model, was born. This creation was equipped with a four-cylinder engine of 1131 cubic centimeters, and in the six-cylinder version later on, it would be recognized as one of the most successful. While the car's design was still far from perfection, the crucial factor was that the young man had a bright mind. He simply lacked financial support to refine everything he envisioned. Only thanks to his good reputation and an earned name did Bugatti manage to find the sponsorship needed. From the moment he first met potential investors in 1909 and outlined his future plans, the official history of the Bugatti brand began. With sponsor investments and his own savings, a small production facility was opened in the small town of Molsheim, near Strasbourg. It was here that cars with horseshoe-shaped radiators began to conquer the European automotive market. The initial models were the Type 13, Type 15, and Type 17. Externally, the cars were identical but differed only in wheelbase length, 2,000 mm, 2,400 mm, and 2,550 mm. The engine remained a four-cylinder, now reaching 1327 cubic centimeters. These models were soon presented by the creator at the Paris exhibition and proved to be very successful. In 1913, the model range expanded with the addition of the Type 22 and Type 23. Moreover, Ettery continued to be passionate about racing, and in 1914, models like the Type 16 and Type 18 were created for sale. These models differed from their predecessors with a 5-liter engine and a design that now had more sporty contours. About 12 cars were released for sale, with the first buyer being aviation veteran and, coincidentally, Ettery's friend, Roland Garros. Yes, friends, the famous French aviator and military pilot participating in World War I. Later, a sports complex would be named after him, hosting the Open French Tennis Championship to this day. The last racing model, the Type 18, even participated in the Indianapolis 500 races in the 1910s. Overall, everything was going quite well, but the unexpected onset of war forced a reconsideration of investors' approach to business. No one wanted to invest much money in a new car. Eventually, Ettery was forced to sell the patent for car production to the Peugeot company. After the war, the designer moved to the victorious country's France, which became his new homeland. It was in France that all the famous models of the company were created, but more on that later. Soon, a decision was made to rename the old Bugatti Type 13, Type 22, and Type 23 models, now called Brescia Bugatti. Returning to car production, Ettery set a goal to create a supercar with no equivalents. Thus, spending over two years on his development, in 1921, the company introduced the entirely new Type 28 car at the Paris and London auto shows. It featured an eight-cylinder engine with a capacity of three liters and a whopping 90 horsepower. The car was produced in only five units, and its subsequent model, the Type 29, in only two units. 
Despite these successful models, unquestionably, the company's best creation during those years was the Type 32 tank, released in four different modifications and created exclusively for Grand Prix racing. Although the Bugatti concern did not occupy leading positions in the automotive market, it remained stable and independent. Ettery believed that a car should have its own soul. Even though he sold fewer cars than Ford, he was proud of each one. The cars of this brand were sold in small batches, all assembled by hand, without any assembly line. Each car was like a sculpture, beautiful, high quality, reliable, and powerful. Until 1924, Ettery's main goal in creating a supercar had not yet been achieved. It took him a long time to create a car that would win all the top places in races, but he was slowly moving in the right direction. Thanks to his perseverance, everything changed in 1924. His Bugatti Type 35 model not only took the lead in the second stage of the European Grand Prix, but also secured four first places. Naturally, Ettery was ecstatic. The Type 35 became a Bugatti racing legend, even entering production and enjoying considerable demand among racing enthusiasts, bringing the company significant and substantial income. From 1924 to the 1930s, Bugatti sold a total of 336 cars. The Type 35 model earned Bugatti about 1,800 victories in various competitions and was the best until the emergence of the famous German Silver Arrows. Ettery Bugatti's dream came true his cars became the best among the best. It is considered that from this moment, the company truly reached its peak as for five years, the cars with numbers 35, 35A, 35B, 35S, and 35T were the leaders in all possible races. In the late 1920s, the car lineup was enriched with a newcomer, the Type 41 Royale, created exclusively for government officials and instantly becoming the epitome of prestigious luxury cars. The car's design was elegant, with an interior made of genuine wood and tapestry. The car's length reached 4.5 meters, and its power output was 260 horsepower. The overall weight of the car exceeded 3 tons. Originally planned for a production of 25 units, only 6 were eventually built, with the wealthiest millionaires becoming its owners. Each car had its own engine, but since many of them proved unsuitable, they were installed in regular locomotives. Just imagine, these engines could have been part of luxurious cars and history, but in reality, they powered trains. Financial crisis was inevitable. The company faced bankruptcy and had to be saved. To achieve this, the Type 44 model was introduced, produced in large quantities and offered at a more affordable price for a broader audience. Additionally, the Type 46 Petite Royale, a more compact version of the Type 41 La Royale, was released. The 1930s began with a significant release of new models, including the Type 43 and Type 50, differing only in horsepower and design. Type 50B, by the way, was produced exclusively for racing to revive the brand's former glory. It did bring some victories until the first German cars appeared on the market. In 1931, Ettery personally designed the first car with an electric motor, the Type 52B, initially created for his son Roland. However, the car gained popularity among the young man's close friends and went into serial production. At the same time, the Type 54 with an 8-cylinder engine was introduced, achieving not only podium finishes in races, but also setting a speed record of over 210 km per hour. Interestingly, the car was driven by the Russian racer Tchaikovsky. One should not forget the Bugatti Type 57 convertible, one of the first, released in several modifications. In 1939, the most powerful version, Type 57 C45, was launched, resulting in the tragic death of Jean Bugatti. After winning in Le Mans, Jean swerved to avoid a cyclist, crashed, and lost his life. During the war, there was a hiatus in car production, and after World War II, the company faced new challenges. 
The post-war Europe had limited resources for purchasing luxurious and expensive cars. The company incurred losses but avoided bankruptcy due to its reputation and accumulated resources over its existence. In 1947, Bugatti faced another blow as its chief inspiration and founder, Ettore Bugatti, passed away, marking the end of an era. The last car personally designed by Ettore Bugatti was the Type 73, completed two weeks before his death. The car premiered at the 1947 Paris Motor Show, using two different engines, Type 43S and Type 43A, marking the successful conclusion of Bugatti's history. After Ettore's death, the Bugatti Automotive Company declined. Until the 1960s, only six new cars were added to the lineup, failing to gain significant acclaim. The Bugatti brand might have faded into oblivion if not for Ettore's younger son and his brother Roland taking on the task of reviving the company. In 1959, they introduced the collaborative project type 451B12, a car with a powerful engine, competing with the best models from Ferrari. Unfortunately, the car required investments and improvements that the company couldn't afford. A tough decision was made, Bugatti was sold to Hispano Suiza, which immediately closed all automotive projects, thus ending the era of the Bugatti family business. For a long time, the company remained dormant, but for the 110th anniversary of Ettore Bugatti's birth, the Bugatti EB110 was released. The car gained attention as a candidate for the title of the world's fastest car, featuring a 553 horsepower engine, a gray leather interior with walnut inserts, and various luxury amenities. Despite its racing version participating in the 1,994 Sierra Leonean Leones Man's 24-hour race, it did not secure a podium finish. Bugatti experienced two revivals. In 1989, it was acquired by Italian entrepreneur Romano Ardioli, who assembled a team of top Italian designers to create the fastest sports car of that time, the Bugatti EB110. Despite its success, Bugatti's production under Ardioli lasted a short time, and the company went bankrupt in 1995. The true renaissance came after Bugatti became part of the Volkswagen Group in 1998. Initially doubted by many, the brand flourished again. After the presentation of the concepts EB118 Up and EB218, Bugatti focused on creating the ultimate sports car, the Veyron. The next model was the sports car EB18-3 Chiron and EB18-4 Veyron. The design of the former was handled by Ital Design, while the latter was entirely created in Wolfsburg under the direction of Hartmut Wargus. This project evolved into the production version, the Veyron, which was released for sale in 2005 at a price of $1.7 million. The supercar justified its price with cutting-edge technological advancements, achieving a maximum speed of 408 km per hour and accelerating from 0 to 100 km in just 2 seconds. In 2008, the Grand Sport version was developed based on the Veyron, becoming the fastest serial production roadster of all time. Only 150 units were sold at an astonishing price of $2.1 million each. The Veyron held its ground until 2016 when it was succeeded by the ultimate hypercar of the new generation, the Bugatti Chiron. Unveiled at the 2016 Geneva Motor Show, this model became the fastest, 420 km per hour, most powerful, 1500 horsepower, and expensive, $2.5 million, serial production car on the market. The Chiron featured an upgraded 8-liter W16 engine with four two-stage turbochargers, a 7-speed dual-clutch transmission, and an all-wheel drive system. Now, let's delve into the Bugatti logo. The emblem consists of a three-color oval-shaped figure with 60 red dots symbolizing pearls or safety cables embedded in a narrow white frame. The word Bugatti is cut in white letters with black shadows lying on a red background at the center of the logo. The emblem incorporates the trademark EB above the name, representing the initials of the great Ettore Bugatti. 
It is believed that Ettery's father, being an excellent jeweler and artist, devised the company's logo. Bugatti cars lacked gaskets, so the protective cables resembled lace patterns, explaining the presence of red dots on the Bugatti logo. Another theory suggests that Ettery's older brother regarded his son's cars as exquisite jewelry, and the dots symbolize a connection with jewelry pieces. The primary color of the Bugatti logo is red, naturally demonstrating extraordinary power, passion, and driving pleasure. White symbolizes elegance and nobility, while black shades represent perfection and boldness. Today, we associate the Bugatti brand with wealth and luxury. Every Bugatti car is genuinely magnificent and deserving of all praise. Bugatti Veyron, for example, boasts some interesting facts. Its brakes are made by the same company that manufactures brakes for Airbus. Additionally, Bugatti has its wing that automatically adjusts with a speed sensor, helping the car stay grounded when accelerating faster than an airplane during takeoff. This feature was developed in collaboration with aerospace engineers, considering the truly cosmic speeds involved. Regarding the engine, its actual power is 3,000 horsepower, with two-thirds of this energy dissipating as heat. During the initial engine test, the building nearly caught fire due to the excessive heat, enough to warm a hundred houses in winter. When testing the first Bugatti Veyron at speeds exceeding 300 km per hour, flames erupted from the exhaust pipe for 2 meters. Engineers considered keeping this feature but deemed it illegal, leading to the development of a unique cooling system. Imagine this monster that reaches 100 km per hour in just 2.5 seconds and 300 km per hour in 17 seconds. Moreover, gear shifts occur without a power drop, taking only 150 milliseconds. This is faster than the blink of an eye. The shift controller alone is more powerful than four computers. Even when speeding at 407 km per hour, Bugatti takes only 10 seconds to bring the car to a complete stop. Essentially, nothing like this had ever been produced before, and most likely, it never will be. Bugatti had to develop new tires because no one else was producing tires capable of operating at speeds exceeding 400 km per hour. In fact, this car can outpace an airplane. For such speeds, Bugatti's fuel tank has a capacity of 100 liters, as Bugatti is quite the fuel enthusiast. In city driving, the fuel consumption is 47.2 liters per 100 km. And for those unaware, everything in Bugatti is still assembled by hand, with love and care. Only a few know how challenging it is to preserve what has been built over the years. Not everyone understands what needs to be done to maintain the level you have been striving for over the years. The company has experienced both highs and lows throughout its history, spanning decades. However, despite this, Bugatti has withstood the test of time and continues its journey, even without its main creator, Ettore Bugatti. While only a few can afford this car, it is thanks to it that an ordinary self-taught enthusiast has forever inscribed their name in history. In summary, this is everything I wanted to tell you about Bugatti cars. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, please show your support with a like and a comment. Until next time, take care.